My name is Captain Dave Howd. I'm a team leader in Alpha Company, 97th Civil Affairs Battalion. We are in southwest Georgia and we have teams partnered with county governments in, throughout the area in order to determine what their civil areas of concern are and to attempt to find areas to assist them in mitigation of those concerns. I'm the team leader for a four-man civil affairs team. Even though I'm the team lead, we have specialty areas represented in all the other three members. Our intent in this area is to use our expertise and replicate what effects we can achieve when we deploy to several countries in South and Southeast Asia. My name is Craig Tully. I'm the Fire Chief for the City of Coquit and Miller County Fire Department. In our opening meeting, we, we gave them three areas that we, we were deficient in that we felt like we really needed help. First being active shooter response from the perspective of emergency medical personnel. Second being storage and transportation of toxic chemicals in and about the community because it is a highly agricultural society. And the third concern being the reliability of their communication services for all law enforcement, fire, and emergency medical personnel in the county. On behalf of our unit, uh, 97 Civil Affairs uh, Battalion and United States Army Special Operations Command, we really appreciate your time. Hopefully we will be uh, some value added to you all over this upcoming loop. Sir, Sergeant Major, here's the uh, current personnel that we have on ground right now. Uh, Alpha Company Opsin is located in Albany. That's where the majority of their individuals are at. Uh, the teams are co-located with the counties. My name is Marcus Foreman, uh, Major, U.S. Army, uh, 97th Civil Affairs Battalion out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Today we're in uh, Blakely, Georgia, conducting the culmination exercise for the 97th Civil Affairs Battalion. And you know, this is a free-flowing type of uh, exercise. Nothing is scripted validating six civil affairs teams for preparation for their deployment to the Special Operations Command Pacific Theater of Operations. All right, it's gonna be a good exercise. Everybody stay focused. Let's do good and great things out here. So in addition to every team having its own sort of built-in organic capability ranging from language and cultural expertise, uh, the other capability that we bring to the table really is uh, the ability to reach out to other organizations that have uh, capabilities beyond what is built into the team. Major Jason Bursima, I'm the officer in charge of the 62nd Ford Engineer Support Team Advance. We're a small team of technical engineers, just two military and six DA civilians with expertise in different engineering disciplines. We're here to really work with uh, the city and local officials here in Randolph County, um, help them to assess their problems and, and work together to recommend solutions. Really, we don't ask much from the counties other than their time and really the opportunity to go out and do some things. And it's, it's really a win-win. So it's extraordinarily rewarding to see something that we value so much bring so much value uh, to a community. Looking at the active shooter problem, we've taken a look at historical issues, not only in Georgia, but throughout the country. Looking at how active shooter incidents play out what kind of trauma takes place is where our medic has his expertise and can assist the county. And additionally, something that's not thought of often, which is dealing with the post-traumatic stress of an active shooter, we brought in our unit chaplain. They came in and brought in some um, expertise that uh, gave us a, a, over, a summary of, of what to expect, what to do, how to handle it. FBI study is three to five minutes, the active shooter is going to be over. Um, we were able to combine our fire and EMS together for that training and it was really good. They cover all the bases. And then all day long, I, my phone was ringing, uh, firefighters telling me how much they enjoyed it. Can we get them back? The next thing that we had is we have a uh, chemical warehouse here for the, that covers the whole southeast of the United States. And the, the type of product that they have and how they store it has been a, a concern for this community, especially with our school real close. 
We brought in some chemical experts from North Carolina. They are currently the subject matter experts that we could access who could best provide Miller County with advice and best practices on spill mitigation and spill prevention. Well, we're gonna go back to our headquarters and we're gonna digest what we have and come up with a good plan and recommendations that we can make this place the best place and the safest place for the people that work here and the people that live here. When you train in this environment and really you conduct an operation, you're dealing with real people that may actually tell you no or their child may get sick on Monday and they may not be able to make the meeting the next day. Those are real things that happen in real life and those put uh, the type of stressors on teams that we would not have otherwise seen. And our biggest overall problem, I think countywide with all emergency agencies, is our communications. Several times uh, I know EMS has had to come out of the house treating a patient to get into the truck to call on the radio because the handheld wouldn't do it. We took a look at their radio towers and fortunately we were able to plot the, the grid coordinates for the location of these pass those grid coordinates on to the Army Corps of Engineers geographical information specialist. But the green is basically the areas that would then be covered. In a very short turnaround time, he was able to produce a topographical map showing the difference in coverage for these two towers. In the past, we've met with our elected officials and we've described the situation to them and told them there were certain areas of the county that, that we couldn't talk. But now that we have an a, a actual map that we can show, I think we can get some results now. Thank you, sir, my friend. Y'all be sure. good. Take nice care, to meet you. Nice to meet Take you. Care. At the end of the day, the real world stressors that are being placed on the teams here can absolutely prevent catastrophic failure downrange, whether it comes in the form of loss of rapport or outright mission failure when they get on the ground. I think this exercise was great because what it did uh, first of all, is it, is it opened our eyes and gave us a totally different view of just exactly what the Army does. You know, I never dreamed that they, they would do anything like this. Myself, Rich, uh, Brian and Brandon personally, uh, we appreciate all the support. The specific improvement I saw on my team is in the critical thinking and the analysis that they do during mission. <laughs> The second thing that it did for me was that it gave me a good feeling to know that, that um, the Army cares about small communities because we are a small community and we don't have a lot of resources, but they came in and opened doors for us that, that would not have been opened. One of the biggest takeaways for myself and my team is the relationship building that we excel at and we make our area of expertise. Uh, I'd take any member of my team with me into country uh, without question.